Caroline, founder of Equitopia. The feet are the first part of the horse's body to hit the ground, and in this, the first of a two-part series, we take a look at the anatomy and biomechanics of the foot with our lead educator, Kirk Atkins. Today I'm going to talk to you about using anatomy as a fundamental trim paradigm. And we have many trim paradigms that are competing for our attention right now, which is the barefoot or the hoof pastern axis or any number of things that comes along. I'm here to make a case for anatomy. Anatomy is the most important thing that we have to know in order to understand why this paradigm for a trim, which is planing coffin bone even to the horizon, making it level, does many things for the horse that are on beyond just the performance or how it looks or whatever, but it really helps the health and the well-being of the animal. Before we look at the trim, it's important to learn the basic anatomy of equine limbs, which Kirk categorizes into three parts. Comprised of basically the bones, the cornified tissue, which we call the hoof capsule, and then the soft tissues, which is the digital cushion, tendons and ligaments, soft structures that provide the locomotion attachment to the bones. Starting at the top, this long bone right here, this is the cannon bone or the metacarpal. This is the long pastern of P1, short pastern of P2, and this is the coffin bone or P3. We also have some auxiliary bones uh, known as sesamoid bones, and those are the proximal sesamoids that we find at the back of the pastern. And then we have the distal sesamoid, which is the navicular bone. So P3 is the coffin bone, and that's one that we're gonna spend a lot of time describing what its needs are because of its positional relationship to the ground. The hoof capsule, it's comprised of the cornified tissues. Cornification is the formation of tough skin structures like hair, nails, and horns. This white area right here that blends with the frog, and this is the periopal, and this is the frog. And in this area here, Everything that's not the wall and bars is the sole. Then we have the hoof wall. That's that major heavy outside cornified tissue. That is what the horse uses as its primary weight bearing structure. We can look at it from the front. We can see that it grows continuously all the way down with tubules. You can see the striations in the hoof, kind of like hair that's fused together to form the hoof wall. Then the capsule, you can see this, this is the hoof wall, this is the sole, this is the frog, and here is our first elastic structure, the digital cushion. See how it forms the bulbs of the heels and the insensitive primary lamellae. We also have a, a specialized tissue on the wings of the coffin bone called the collateral cartilages. Those are all attached to the coffin bone, or P3. Corium inside the hoof capsule is germinal. That is, it produces other layers, like lamina and hoof wall. This corium, or this germinal layer, produces the hoof wall, and right here produces the lamellae, or the lamina, from the in to the inside of the hoof. This structure right here is the solar corium, and, or the sensitive sole, and it produces the sole cornified structure right here. Because of the circulation, the blood flow is dependent upon the position of the coffin bone to the ground. There's quite a few soft tissue structures inside the hoof capsule, but the one that exerts the most influence on the coffin bone is the deep digital flexor tendon. This is deep flexor tendon. You can see it goes down here over the navicular bone and into the bottom of the foot. So now you see that every structure inside the hoof capsule is attached to and affected by the position of the coffin bone. In the trimming of the horse, we have different paradigms for trimming or different ideas and theories on what we should do to trim the foot. In our standard hoof pastern alignment, we want the front of the coffin bone to be equal to the uh, line through the midsection of the pastern. So those two lines going down should be parallel in this theorem. There's about 70% of the horses that follow that. So if you follow that paradigm, you're gonna be correct 70% of the time. But there's that 30% that fall outside that normal line, that hoof pastern axis. They're either too steep or they're too low. Knowing the, what the anatomy tells us the structures need was gonna help us do a better job for those horses that lie outside of our normal hoof pastern alignment. So why is trimming to the plane of the coffin bone important? There are three fundamental things that it does for the horses. Number one, it helps to balance the tendons and ligaments in their legs to a neutral position. The tension between the flexor and extensor tendons and the suspensory apparatus 
becomes balanced in the neutral standing position, allowing maximum range of movement during locomotion. Number two. Digital mediolateral and anterior posterior balance is based on the skeleton, not on the hoof capsule. The hoof capsule is often trimmed differentially to achieve the alignment of the dorsal hoof wall with the angle of the pastern, creating circulation problems. Which brings us to our next point. Number three, circulation. Trimming to the plane of the coffin bone allows blood circulation to all parts of the hoof. When the pastern is fully extended, blood flow to the hoof briefly shuts off. Then circulation returns to the hoof. But when the heel is elevated, and the coffin bone becomes unlevel, as in the case of these extreme wedge pads, the coffin bone can put pressure on surrounding blood vessels, causing circulating blood to be interrupted when the horse is in motion. So this puts the coffin bone on the ground and all the structures are stacked on top of it in a very solid and balanced manner. While proper foot care is essential for horse health, it is important to remember that various other factors such as saddle fit and training can affect the loading of the feet and should be considered in any initial and follow-up evaluations.